She can go when she gets warmed up and gets going. Well, it's been great to see all the horses uh, which you're going to be lining up with in March. So how do you feel your Cheltenham team's evolving this year? Yeah, about the same as, as normal, probably. We, I think we've probably got um, a dozen nice horses to run, which is ideal. I mean, not quite in the same league as Willie, really, probably have 70 or so. I don't know how they organise and do all that. But, you know, we're quite selective in this country. And you know, there's a lot of good races on either side of Cheltenham. I like campaigning from the beginning to the end. So it doesn't fit in with all of them to we going to Cheltenham. The only ones we try and run at Cheltenham now are ones that we think have got a realistic chance. Mm. So we've got a nice, small, select team that I think we've got nice chances. Who's going to be your best chance, you think, for the week and the horse that you're most looking forward to seeing line up? <laughs> well, I'm most looking forward to seeing Brave Man's game run. Yeah. Not saying he's our best chance, but he's definitely got a chance. He's definitely come right back to his best, and I don't think I had the most perfect preparation in this. Just didn't work out right in, in the autumn. Although we still ran second in three good races and um, ran a good race in the King George. I think there's more to come yet, and I think we got him back to our best. So looking forward to seeing him run. Um, best chance? That's always a difficult one, but I suppose Jin is destined his favourite now, probably. He's been progressive. He must have a lovely chance. Next one is Ginny's Destiny. Probably one of the most improved horses in training this year, arguably. Won his last three. Um, all at Cheltenham. Was very good on, new, on Charles Day on the new course, which suits him quite well. He loves Cheltenham. He's made all in his last three runs. Jumped brilliantly. Galloped all the way up the Cheltenham Hill. Probably stays three miles, although we haven't gone that far yet. But what I like about him, he's a good, solid horse. He, 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 he jumps well. He goes a good gallop and he keeps galloping. And he's a smart animal. And I think he's still improving. He's a horse that came to you rate right, about yeah. 135. Yeah. He's up in the 150s now. Have yeah. you ever had such a rapid improver and one that's just blossomed? Obviously, quite a low key start. Masterminded. Yeah. Masterminded, funny enough. Mm -hmm. When he was five, he started off winning a handicap at Sandown. I can't remember who, where, the, where he was, but I don't think he was any higher than 140 and ended up winning the champion chase that year. Yeah. And sometimes horses do progress. He slotted in with our routine and what we did and just got better and better and better. And some of his work before the last day he won was fantastic. And yeah, he's a progressive horse. Yeah. He was so fat when he joined us that yeah. the only way he was going to get fit was have a run. And I just thought if he had a run there in that autumn meeting, he'd get some experience. We'd know a bit more about him. I never dreamt he was going to go as far as he did. Yeah. but. Just the way he, the second time he travelled and jumped, just thought, hmm, he's his proper horse. So this is Brave Man's game. Obviously, he was second in last year's Gold Cup, ran an absolute screaming race. This season, probably, I wouldn't say it's my finest three runs training. Uh, probably, it just hasn't worked out brilliantly. The first day he went to the Charlie Hall, he had a harder race, and he probably wasn't 100% ready, not that time of year. Just got a bit tired from the back of the last. Still ran a solid race. So we then went to the Betfair Chase on a game testing ground en route to Kempton. Now, I didn't have a lot of time to get in it is best for Kempton. But at Kempton, to be fair, he actually ran a really good race. In my view, him and Shiskin would have been first or second. Copland's got his opinion, nicky has got his opinion. But the, I don't think there's much between him and Shiskin, to be honest with you. And they still got interfered with when Shiskin had that hiccup. If that hadn't happened, he'd probably still won anyway. But of course, he got stopped dead. Um, and then still picked himself up and galloped all the way to the line. I still don't think we've had him nowhere near his best yet because of the circumstances in the autumn. He's right back there now. He looks great. Harry scored him on last Tuesday and he, he jumped brilliant. He's feeling good. And I think, obviously, Galloper de Champ is the one we've all got to beat. But I think there's three or four. Shiskin, him, fast or slow. They're all much of a much I think they're all on a par with each other and we've all got to beat the favourite. But... I'm, I'm really happy with the where, he, where he is and the way he's gone in. I think we'll see a much better horse than we've done so far this season. Going back to Brave Man's game, coming into this yeah. year's uh, Gold Cup, are you happier with your prep or, or as equally happy as what you were last season? Oh, well, last year was a good prep because obviously he won the Charlie Hall, he won the King George and then he ran very well in the Gold Cup and also at Punchestown. He's no different horse than he was last year, just the ground was different in the Charlie Hall this year. And we probably needed the run, and then we went for the Betfair chase. Mm. I think it was probably in hindsight. You know, people like to see these horses run, but sometimes by doing so, we do the wrong thing. And I mm. think probably that run between the Charlie Hall and the King George probably just cost us a King George. Mm. He still ran very well in the King George. Harry was happy with him. Um, but I think since then, he's taken a, he had a, a break and he's taken a step forward. And when he scored last week, he was definitely right back to his best. Stage star. 
obviously won the Turners last year. Needs to be fresh, needs to be right. Not the easiest in the world to train. He has a few little issues. When he's right, he's very good. Obviously won the Paddy Power Gold Cup at Cheltenham. They're off top weight very nicely indeed, even though he made a horrific mistake at the last. Managed to gallop all the way to the line. I wish now I hadn't run him on New Year's Day, obviously, because it didn't work out. Graham was testing, he had top weight, made a couple of mistakes, and I don't think he was quite at his best. But I was struggling to get any option in this country to run him before Charlton left-handed, because he has to go left-handed. He doesn't need to have an away day, because he always goes well fresh. Scored well last week, and I'd say he's right back to his best. If he hadn't run on New Year's Day, he'd probably be favourite for the um, Ryanair. But we're very happy he's back where he is. He loves that, the new course which the race is on. He's had loads of time and we're very, very happy with him now. He looks great in his coat. Chloe rides him every day. She's smiling most days, so that gives us a bit of a clue. So, yeah, looking forward to running in the Ryanair. Must have a great chance. So this is horses in the bumper called Tishan. He won Irish point to point back there in the autumn very impressively. We gave him loads of time to acclimatise. He needed all the time to Exeter when he made his debut for us and basically cantered around and absolutely bolted in. So um, we've taken the decision to um, go to the Cheltenham, the, the bumper. He's obviously a talented horse. So last year, Captain Teague was in the same sort of, I think he'd won his bumper at Plumpton. We went to the Cheltenham bumper, he finished third, ended up winning a grade one hurdle this year. And I put him very much on a par with Captain Teague, where he won the other day, but we're gonna, know, you know, we don't know that much about him. Everyone will know a lot more about him when he runs in the Cheltenham bumper, but going on next year, hopefully he'll end up doing what Captain Teague's done or following that sort of route. This is a nice horse. This is called Liari. He's a juvenile. He's, he's, he's run three times this year and won all three. You know, he's got two options at Cheltenham. He's in the, the Boodles on the first day of a mark of 134. And he's also in the Triumph on the Friday. I'm going to look at it closely. If the Triumph looked like a very small field, we might take our chance. But I dare say the race for him is the Boodles on the first day. I'd say he's as good as any of the ones I won with Diego and Calando. And, uh, and we've won the Boodles a few times and done well. He, he's, he's, a, he's a smart horse. I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. And I can see him running very well. How do you find buying horses these days? Like we've, Obviously, Liari's one that springs yeah. to mind. You've done incredibly well for him. Do you find that those good flat horses that you can bring on jumping are around as much these days? Or do you feel like the international no. scene's taken yeah. them away from yeah. you? Yeah, I don't know how we ended up buying him. Tom Malone bought him and did a good job buying him. Um, yeah, those flat horses are harder to buy. But, you know, sometimes you get lucky with them, sometimes you don't. You know, it's all about having that willingness to jump. And the first day that horse went in the school IR, he just loved it. Yeah. That makes a massive difference. Mm. They've got to jump well. And he, he does that. But they're harder to buy, yeah. yeah. They are, definitely. So this is last year's Albert Bartlett winner, stay away for eight. He's definitely taken a step forward. He won first time out at Exeter. He won very well at Sandown. He ran a good race in the Cotswold Chase. In a, in a bit of a muddling race, it turned out to be a bit of a sprint, but he got some valued experience at Charnham against the older horses. And at the weights, he ran very, very well. So we're pleased with that. I think the other day he ran well to a point, and then he half blew up going past the second last and then stayed on strong again late on in, the, as I said, a bit of a muddling race, but it did him a world of good to run against the older horses. Good experience jumping wise. Yeah, he's in good shape and so he's all ready to go. All right, this is Captain Teague. Obviously a smart horse, as I said last year, he won his bumper at Plumpton, went to Charlton Bumper, finished third. On his debut over hurdles, he won the Persian War Novices hurdle at Chepstow. Ran well at Charlton when he was second. I think we learnt quite a lot about him. Harry learnt quite a lot about him. Didn't jump as well as he might. Then he went to the Chalo Grade 1 at Newbury over Christmas and stayed on, stayed on very dourly and won very nicely. My sort of thinking is that if the ground is like normal chart, I'm not too testing, you're probably running the Albert Bartlett. But I'm convinced the way he stays on in his races, that that trip will suit him well. And he travel well and stay on up that Cheltenham Hill. And he's very much on a par with stay away fate. But again, lovely horse is going to make an awesome chase the next season. And this year, going into Cheltenham, you're sitting on a nice figure of mm. 48. I'm assuming mm. getting to something like 50 festival winners would mean a lot to you. Yeah, I would, because when I started, I never dreamt I'd have won, let alone getting near to 50. So, you know, it, it, it would be a good landmark to do one day. But at the end of the day, you're not really looking at records. We just want to win as many races at the at Cheltenham as we can, as is everybody else who's competing there.